absences on the king's business elsewhere and I'm humbled to be able to stand at the sacred desk this morning. I greet board members, family of faith and visiting friends. Praise God. You may be seated if you can. been desperate? Have you ever been desperate? Like really desperate? Have you ever wanted something so badly that you don't care how much it costs? You don't care how much sleep you lose? Have you ever been so desperate? You don't even care about the risks involved? Have you ever been so desperate? So desperate you take on Michael Jordan argument and say, just do it? Have you ever been so desperate 
that nobody matters, nothing matters. Everybody black, you, you see no one. Have you ever been that desperate? It's me, oh Lord. I'm desperate. I don't care who is here and who is not here. I'm desperate, God. Give me you, God. The friends saw the need of their friend. He was sick and he needed to be touched by Jesus. The crowd was great. The obstacles were great. And so they had to find any means possible because their friend had a need. He was desperate. Because they understood that he was desperate, they too became desperate. My thought to you today, desperate. By this chapter is over, because I have prepared the ground, I am now very desperate. I am desperate. So Lord, I've set up the buckets and the pans and the taverns and whatever else to catch the outpouring. No, I'm ready. I'm desperate for the outpouring. And because I'm desperate, whatever I need to do this morning, whatever I need to put in place, right now me desperate, God. The friends didn't think about who would be upset because them get skipped. The friends did not think about what will happen after the tear out the roof. They had one, two things on their minds. To see Jesus and to get help for their friend. So the friend was on their mind, the need, and Jesus. So every, everybody else became insignificant. Because the need was great, they were desperate. Nothing could stop them because they were desperate. There's like a saying that we have, desperate times call for desperate measures. It can't be business as usual when you're desperate. Things have got to change. Things have got to readjust. Things have got to be different when you're desperate. Time was against them. It could mean the death of their friend. It could mean a longer time for their friend to smile again. It could mean a longer time for if the friend had children, for the children to be able to play with their father. It could also mean that he's a, their friend is going to have to wait a longer time to love and embrace his wife. Everything hung on that one moment, that one hour. Everything was hanging on that Meeting Jesus today was priority. Everything was at stake. If they did not meet Jesus today, it could be the end for their friend. They were desperate. And when you are desperate, you reap results. Because Jesus saw their faith and said, your faith has caused your sin to be forgiven because they were desperate. No, excuse me a minute. I have to take off my shoes. Guess why? I was desperate some years ago to lose weight. And it seemed as if my shoes stretch out. It is flipping and flopping. Desperation brings result. When you're desperate, you will reap results. No, understand this. There are four signs. Now I'm trying to be a topical preacher here this morning. 
There are four signs of desperation. When you see these four signs, you know that people are desperate. So observe when you go along to know if this person is desperate. Luke 19 verse 1 to 10 speaks of Zacchaeus. Now we know the story of Zacchaeus. Rich tax collector, Brother Curtis. Have money. Tall up him dollars strong. But Zacchaeus had a need. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus really needed to see Jesus. Now he had shortcomings. He had limitations because he was vertically challenged in the chart. But he needed to see Jesus. Now my first point is, when you are desperate, pride dies. When you are desperate, pride dies. There's no room for pride when you're desperate. There's no space for pride when you're desperate. Because when you're desperate, you do crazy things. Now Zacchaeus, those times they wear frock. Zacchaeus have to lift up in frock and climb up in the sycamore tree because he had to see Jesus. People will be saying, oh, look at the, the great rich man. Look at him going up into the tree. Look at him. And they will criticize him because it was not the proper thing to do. But Zacchaeus had a need. Zacchaeus was desperate. And because he was desperate, climbing up on a tree was nothing. He needed to see Jesus. Anybody here this morning, you need to see Jesus. Yes, you have some things going on. Yes, you have some story. But in spite of your shortcomings, you still want to see Jesus. Let me advise you. Kill pride and climb up in your sycamore tree and see Jesus. Because guess what? Jesus saw him and Jesus said come Zacchaeus I'm going to eat at your house I'm going to have dinner with you and the people start to criticize oh Zacchaeus was a thief oh Jesus I eat with thief oh Jesus I meet up with thief oh am I inviting boy you're going to his house and he's a thief because of your story your past incidents. A lot of people go and say, but oh, come here and talk about you yeah, reach out and touch God. Reach out and touch which God. God not touch you. Oh, be quiet. If you really need to touch him, he will touch you. Let pride die. I say, Lord, I'm desperate. That's your pride. Make people talk. Don't cut cross people talk. I'm just saying. Them have to talk. You know, people will talk. You can't get rid of that. But your need is greater than the criticism. Your need is greater than people mode. Your need is greater. So what? I'm not perfect. And the truth is, you know, Zacchaeus might be openly a thief. But some of the same criticism might be quietly a thief. Think about it. Zacchaeus admit that I'm a thief. I'm a rap people. Me take me charge them more than I'm supposed to be charged. But that doesn't change the fact, Father God, that Jesus, I, I just want to touch you. I know that I have shortcomings. I know I've done some dumb stuff and some unfair stuff. But here I come admitting that I was wrong. Admitting my shortcomings. Admitting that I need you. I'm desperate. I can't come down out the tree unless I see you. I can't come down out the tree, Father God, until I see Jesus. I cannot come down out the tree. And I know that everybody looking up at me on the tree, but I cannot come down out the tree until my need is met. I'm that desperate. Pride goes. Some of us were itty-tighty. 
and we behave as if we're the best thing since sliced bread. But understand this fact. It doesn't matter who you are. If you've not yet met Jesus, you are pretty much nobody. Until you've met him the right way. Excuse me, please. You know, I'm not talking right now. Anybody. And the truth of the matter is, 2020 may have been a difficult year. You never get it right. Things never go as it should. But here comes 2021. Are you desperate enough? Have you really cleaned out your place? Have you really made provision? Then if you've made provision, say, Lord, I'm desperate. See me over here, sir. You know my address. You know my name. You know me in and out. Here I am. Touch yourself and say, see me here, God. Desperate. And as if Zacchaeus wasn't enough, because there's a lot of people in the Bible who are desperate, you know. Lux. When I was preparing this message, I never noticed so many people was desperate. A lot of people in the Bible were desperate and they reaped results. They reaped results, Shane. They reaped results. Understand. When you are desperate, fear disappears. Listen, my man. It's so you're desperate, Sean. You come like a superman. Come like you get Red Bull. You get wings. You feel like there's nothing you can't conquer when you're desperate. That is in your way. Excuse me. You're not afraid of none because you're so desperate. Listen. Luke 8, 43 to 48 speaks about the woman with the issue of blood. We all know about that woman. For 12 years, she was bleeding. For 12 years. Now understand this. In those days, the moment you're bleeding, you're supposed to stay away from everybody else. Now, this woman was in a prison. Her need was so great, 12 years. And she was alone. Can you imagine being alone for 12 years? She spent all her resources, all her money she spent up trying to get healing and trying to get doctor this and doctor that. Nothing worked. For 12 years, then she heard that Jesus was passing through. <laughs> Ooh, now understand, remember she cannot go in the crowd. She cannot go among people because if she ever did that, probably she'd be arrested, beaten. We don't know what would have happened to her, but she was not allowed. But she was so desperate. Her need was so great. She said, prisoner, no, prisoner. Bina, no, Bina. I need, I need, I need, I need. And so she started to plan, strategize, begin to put things in place. And then she just quit upon Jesus, you know. She said, I don't even have to hold on to him. He don't even have to hold on to me. We just want a touch. Just give me a touch. I just want that touch. My faith is so big right now. The way I'm desperate. Oh God, I just need a touch. Jesus, you don't have to take me and hold me up, so Jesus. Jesus, you don't have to put me in your lap and sit down. Just, just give me a touch right from my forehead here, so. I touch from my shoulder here, so. I touch from my back. Jesus said, wait, somebody touch me. But listen to me. She didn't care. Only after she was dried up, she, she realized, that, oops, did I come in public and do that? But Jesus turned to her man, and again the woman received, because she was so fearful, she was almost apologetic. How great is your need? How great is your need? The woman didn't care about the repercussions of her actions because her need was so great. There was no fear. She was propelled by her need. There was no fear of people. There was no fear of penalties. There was no fear. Her need was greater. Her desire was greater. She was desperate. Give me you. Everything else can wait. If they want to arrest me after my heal, at least my husband can come to jail and look for me. And I can sit down and talk to him face to face. And he, at least my children can give me a hug. But I'm so desperate. 
I'm so desperate. It's not enough to be watching everybody living as they should. It's not enough to see the thing that I love happening and I can't participate. And I can't participate. It's not enough to feel the hunger and the desire inside. It's not enough to just be yearning. I can't take it. I can't take it no more. I don't care what it takes. Me no business. Me no business. Me no watch no fears. My desire, Lord. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I just need to touch the hem. Just, just a touch. I just need a touch, Lord. I just want to, when I come into your presence, I'm not lost. I just want a touch. And I know that nobody might not want to talk to me. Everybody might want to stay away from me. But Lord, if you touch me, I'm all right. It's worth the risk. It's worth the risk, Lord. Because I'm desperate. I need you. I really need you, God. I really need you, Lord. I'm not afraid of their faces. I'm not afraid of their words that they will throw at me. I'm not afraid anymore, Lord Jesus. I'm not afraid anymore, Lord, because I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. All I need is you. I'm desperate for that move in my life again. I'm desperate to be able to do the things I used to do. I'm desperate. I don't care anymore. I remember a couple of years ago, as young people, <laughs> we were what, about 17, 16, 17. And it was Friday night, youth meeting night. And when we came to church, youth meeting was nice. And Holy Ghost, you know, was in youth meeting and after youth meeting, you still feel fired up. So we said, we're gonna stay a little bit and pray. We're desperate. We will want the power of God. We were desperate for the power of God. Because we hear so when the power of God falls on you, it's mighty. And we stayed after youth meeting, after nine, ten o'clock, to pray. We were here till the next morning. No, we were so desperate for the presence of God that we didn't realize that demon could have killed us because we got visitation from Satan, from hell. All kind of things happened that night. But we were so desperate for the presence of God that we didn't think about the risk that was involved. Risk went through the window. We didn't care about that. We were fearless as a matter of fact. <laughs> Some of us, namely one standing here, went outside and looked. The door was right there and looked up and saw the cloud move away from the moon. And I said, wow, God is sealing the move in our presence because I was so anxious and excited about God, so desperate. Everything made sense. Nothing was, was crazy. Everything, even when demon licked down one of the young person in here, and we don't understand what's going on with open Bible, but we were so hungry for God. We were so desperate for God that we did some things that were unconstitutional. Did we get into trouble afterwards? Oh, yes. Did we regret it? Oh, no. Because after that, you couldn't talk to us because we were fired up. Because all night prayer meeting by ourselves, we were fired up. It wasn't the right thing to do, but we were desperate. We didn't care about the risk. We didn't care about the risk. We didn't care and those times the air was volatile. We didn't care that somebody could have come in here without us as young people and hurt us. We didn't care about that. And early in the morning, we hit the road evangelizing. For after five, we were so desperate. We didn't think. And I'm sure pastor would be so happy to have some desperate people who just want God to the point where he has to be reining them in and saying, oh, this we can't do this, we can't do that. Desperate. She did not think about the risks. She became fearless because she was desperate. Can't be business as usual. It cannot be business as usual. And point number three, 
your approach changes. No, let me tell you this. I feel good this morning when I see certain sights when I come in here in the front rows. When I see the front rows, I feel good. Because you see, your approach can't be the same when you're desperate. You have to change something because when you're desperate, if you used to sleep on the left, you start sleep on the right. Understand when you're desperate, it cannot be the same. Nicodemus in John 3, 1 to 21 came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus had questions he needed answers for. But you see, he couldn't come in the day because in the daytime, people might see him and create another set of problems. So him Jim screeching in the night and come and say, Jesus. No, sometimes you're praying at home in the day. You have no peace and quiet. All kind of disturbance. And you realize that you're not getting where you need to get to. So guess what? Change your approach. Start praying in the night. Change your approach. When you're desperate, if day not working, try the night. If night not working, try the afternoon. If the living room not working, go in the bathroom. If the bathroom not working, find somewhere else change your approach desperate times cause for desperate measures it can't be business as usual it cannot be business as usual you have to make an adjustment if you are going to experience God you cannot function the same way that is the saying that says only a crazy person keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Your approach changes when you're desperate. Everything about you begin to move in a different direction. Miles Monroe, one of my favorite motivational speakers and teachers, he said, when you understand the vision, Everything in your life, everything is governed by that. So nobody can call you here and call you all over the place. If it is not in the direction that you are going, you don't even need to answer to it. Because you're desperate and you have a goal in mind where you want to get to. If you're normally a yes man or a yes girl and go everywhere for everybody and you are not growing, then you have to put a pause on that. Change your approach. Apologetically, I say to you, I cannot be your yes man and your yes girl anymore. I have to change my approach because there's another level I need to get to and changing my approach because I'm desperate. I'm desperate to move from this point to the next. And the way I'm doing things is not cutting it. Coming to church when church halfway through cannot be desperate people. If it's what you've always done, then you have to change that. As we say, I like the front seat story. Nice. Because you see, it's a sign of desperation. Because nobody never tie your hand and bend your hand to put you there. You walked and you sat. It's a sign of adjustment. And God responds to desperation. There are good results. So I can guarantee you, look out for it. It's coming. The result is coming. The result is coming. I'm desperate. Nicodemus said, I cannot go to God in the day. I cannot go to Jesus in the day. So I'm never going to try the night. Everybody crowd him around in the day. I can't get him by myself. So I'm going to have to go to him in the night. Everybody's going in this direction. And everybody getting the same results. You know what is true? I'm going this other way. I'm desperate. And I say it over again. And some people might be tired of hearing, but I'll say it again. It is all right to go by yourself. Nicodemus never carry anybody. Nicodemus not carry anybody with him. Nicodemus went alone, solo, by himself. If you don't want to come, it's great. I knew it's great to have known you, but I got to go. Nicodemus went alone. And we have this idea like it's something wrong to be by yourself. Nothing wrong to be by yourself, you know. Matter of fact, if you ask me, sometimes when you're by yourself, you think clearer. Because everybody has an opinion on something. And everybody has a solution on something. 
And everybody have a lot. It's a lot of things you have to be processing. When you're by yourself in this, and especially when you're talking about this journey of adjusting to your need of desperate, your desperation, you have to kind of just shut out the world, shut out the noise, and stretch out before God, and lie down, face down before God. Forget about everything else and everyone else. I'm desperate for you. It's me. Oh, Lord. I'm on my knees. And I'm not talking to you. I'm crying. Crying straight. I'm desperate. When I start to cry, I know that I'm serious. It's me. I'm changing my approach. To I examined it. I chromed it through. And I realized that certain operations did not work in my spiritual favor. So therefore, I'm so desperate to get back on track that I have to know, take a different approach. I cannot do things the way I did it before. And if it means that I have to put some indicators on myself to remind me when I'm going off, then I will have to do that. But right now, I'm desperate. I'm desperate to a fault. I'm desperate to look funny. I'm desperate that the people are criticizing me, I'm not here. I'm just desperate. I just need God right now. I just need God. I got me need. I just got me need. I'm not really business with nobody. I just got me need right now. I just more and more. I got me need right now. Everybody else and everything else takes second place. I'm changing my approach. Stop coming certain hours. Don't call my phone. And if you're going to call my phone about rubbish, you've reached the voice mailbox of. If you're a regular rubbish speaker, You've reached the voice mailbox of. If you are a regular Igla, you've reached the voice mailbox of. I don't have time for you. Me change my approach. Nicodemus knew he could not go in the day. The day could not work. He desperately needed answers. He decided to go in the night alone. Meet with Jesus alone. If meeting with Jesus with company is a problem, meet with him alone. If the way you used to read your Bible before not working out, change it. If the way you used to do evangelism and those things before, change it. If it's a case that, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not telling you, you must be an early morning wake up um, riser like myself. But when you wake early in the mornings, when the morning is quiet and still, it's a beautiful time to meet with the Lord. Or even late in the night, when all the activities of the day is past and the place is quiet, it's a beautiful day to meet with the Lord. So if you're going to say you're going to wait until in the day when everybody gone to work, your phone is going to ring. Somebody going to message you. Somebody going to want to talk to you about something or the other. But in the early morning, they must sleep. So when they are sleeping, you are connecting. When they are sleeping, you are meeting with the Lord. When they are sleeping, you've changed your approach. When they are sleeping, that's the time when you are building. Because you're desperate. You cannot take the same approach. And in my final statement, tolerance. There are certain things we wouldn't tolerate under normal circumstances. Certain things we're not put up with. Because let me tell you something. John 9, 6 to, 10, 6 to 7. When Jesus spit in the mud and put on the man's eye. <laughs> when I was reading that, I said to myself, Father God, spit. The man was blind, so I probably couldn't see spit. But look here, when you're spitting, you hear it. So he must hear that Jesus do something. Then he feels something on his eyes. But he was so desperate to see. That all oh, probably if Jesus speak directly in his eye, he didn't care. Because in his need, he was able, he will tolerate anything. Desperate times cause for desperate measures. When I'm not in the house. 
and I'm at home watching is the most uncomfortable thing for me. Because I remember that I don't cook yet. Me turn all our stove, put on peas. And I'm doing a one million and one thing with the phone, walking up and down. Amen. Amen. But it is not really resonating in me. It not connect me so good. That is me. The person who has underlying sicknesses. Or the person who um, is senior who cannot come. They can understand. But not, not do you. You're fit and healthy. But you said, we can watch it online. Why well, you better come at church? Let me tell you the truth. And if it's true for you, say amen in the house. And if you're watching, say amen. It's a different feeling when you come to church. It's a different thing when you're in the house. It's a different thing when you're in the house. You hear the word, you know? You hear it, man. And it connects sometimes. But when you're coming here, and you can't say hallelujah. And you see somebody say hallelujah. And somebody say hallelujah. It's a different business. So when you're desperate, you can't stay at home. Come in at the house. Come in at the house, man. Come join the scenes. Fire, rub up and rub up. When we come in the house, we rub up on each other. Now we go iron sharp, let iron. Desperate. The man bear the spittle. Jesus rubbed it on his eyes. But he was so desperate for, to see. He didn't care. He tolerated that. He bear it. I'm desperate for a closer walk with you. I'm desperate to be where we used to be. I'm desperate for that kind of a love and association. I'm desperate. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, hold the musical to Mr. Musician. I want you to listen to this. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of opposition for it, if you simply go after that thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famine, nor gout, sickness, nor pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you beseech and beset it with the help of God, you will get it. Are you desperate? Are you desperate? Are you desperate for more? Are you desperate to touch God? Are you desperate to move from where you are to where you're supposed to be?